Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Craig. We very much appreciate you guys tuning in this morning. Uh, please, once again, make it a point to like and share this video. Uh, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, please uh, help us to spread the word about the Firearms Policy Coalition. Uh, we are the nation's preeminent grassroots organizer uh, when it comes to, in particular, digital uh, grassroots when it comes to fighting uh, for your Second Amendment rights. Anyway, so today's topic. Uh, well, okay, so once again, everybody's talking about, you know, still talking about Florida, still talking about the shooting that took place in, in Parkland, Florida. Uh Yesterday, I kind of hinted to you about uh, about a story uh, that I was interviewed on on a local station. Well, not really local. It's out of the Bay Area. So I get a, a call from this reporter named Susie. And, you know, they want to do something on, you know, AR-15s and, and you know, just gun laws in general. And uh, really just, you know, wants to talk to me about this particular issue. Now, one of the things that I've come to realize about media, in particular today... Uh, there used to be a time when when someone from the media did a story, they might have some sort of an idea of what they were talking about. And uh, I've come to the realization that uh, in particular, in this day and age, uh, that's not a requirement for media anymore. Uh, in fact, uh, they have absolutely no problem doing a story on something about which they are completely and utterly ignorant. And so that's how we're going to kind of get into today's topic, which is, uh, well, when an anti-gun story goes horribly wrong. All right. Now, first, I'll let you guys watch the story and then I'll give you my thoughts uh, on the on the other side. So uh, you guys jot down your notes and see if we make some of the few uh, make some of the few same few observations. And gun lobbyists will tell you this registration process is more intrusive than previous ones, and it's also been unsuccessful. As soon as the bill was proposed, manufacturers started working on changes to the gun so owners wouldn't have to register it. This is the 18th gun incident since 2018 started. Parkland, Florida marks the third U.S. shooting that prompted State Assemblyman Phil Ting to introduce a gun bill in Sacramento. They, this person should not have been allowed to purchase guns, much less possess guns. Ting's bill would expand the already in place gun violence restraining order. That bill allows loved ones to report a family member they fear could become violent to law enforcement and prevents that person from buying or possessing a gun. Ting's bill introduced today would expand that from loved ones being able to file that report to anyone. Think about this. Someone who you may or may not know uh, goes to the authorities and tells them that they believe that you are a danger to yourself or others. Gun lobbyist Craig Deleuze points out that California already has some of the strictest gun laws in the country. He says they're not helping here. Criminals, by, by their very definition, uh, don't obey laws. And when you pass laws that simply restrict the rights of law-abiding citizens, uh, that does absolutely nothing. As of January 2017, California began requiring residents to register assault weapons, including the AR-15. But that prompted manufacturers to release a workaround before the bill even passed, including an AR-15 model with slight revisions that makes the gun legal. Every time we pass a law, even before the governor signs it, literally the gun manufacturers are finding ways to uh, work around our very specific laws. Okay, so let's let's start from the top. Now, as you can see from the photo that's there, uh, the conversation uh, was about the AR-15. But then she starts talking about a bill that the assemblyman is going to be introducing that is going to expand gun violence restraining orders. Well, which is it? What's the story about? Is it about the AR-15 or is it about gun violence restraining orders. In particular, is it about California's ban on the AR-15, on, on semi-automatic uh, semi -automatic center fire rifles with detachable magazines? That's really what it is. Uh, or is it about gun violence restraining orders? Now, the interesting thing about it is, is that she's talking about a bill that the assemblyman has introduced. Well, then why is she showing a bill that was introduced in the past? 
an old bill that the assemblyman had introduced. She's not showing a current bill. She's not showing the one that he introduced. Do you know why she's not showing the one he introduced? Because he didn't introduce it that day. The day that he did the, they did the story, the day he said he introduced the bill, guess what? He never even introduced it. He was utilizing their contact. He was utilizing that as an opportunity to get himself in the media about a bill that he hadn't even introduced yet. He was just looking to get press, and she fell for it. She didn't bother to, oh, I don't know, check with the clerk to see if the bill had been filed. Ask, what's the bill number? If she had just asked what the bill number was, she would have known. She would have known that it wasn't there, that the bill had not yet been filed. All right, so let's also talk about this quote-unquote. First, I'm going to dissect this into two, into two parts, all right? We'll talk about the gun violence restraining orders, but first let's talk about the quote-unquote workarounds. All right, so the first issue that I have with the idea of the quote-unquote workaround is this. Is it quote, well, the gun manufacturers? Well, let, let, let's just be real. First of all, most of the, most of the things that people have, 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 have come up with weren't invented by those who generally manufacture firearms. Most of them came out, most of them are produced and combined by people who, well, I don't know, John Q. Citizen who's sitting there on their, uh, on their workbench coming up with an idea, a way, a way in which to comply with the law. I find it odd. I find it odd that any time a gun owner complies with the law, well, they're seen, well, it's a workaround. It's seen as a loophole. Any law, that any, any way in which someone complies with the law that they don't like, all of a sudden, it's a loophole. All right? And, and then on, on top of it, you know, probably the, the number one thing in which a lot of people are doing in order to make sure they're in compliance is going featureless, which, oh, by the way, has always been in existence, has always been something that people have been doing. People have always been, has, have chosen to go featureless in order to comply with the law. That's not a workaround. That's always been there. That's always been the case. How exactly is it a workaround if it's already, if it's always existed? That's what happens. Now, now, mind you, let's also talk about gun violence restraining orders. Now, when we get into talking about gun violence restraining orders, and this was the thing that really bugged me about, uh, about kind of the way in which, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, way in which Susie handled this so handled this story, so she asked me about what's the issue with gun violence restraining orders, and you see that she allowed me to kind of start talking. She's the very beginning of it, because I talked about well, what is she said? Well, what what is it about gun violence restraining orders that concerns you? I said, here's what happens: somebody you may or may not know goes to the authorities and tells them that you are a danger to yourself or others. That's where they cut it off. What she doesn't tell you is then they hold a secret hearing that you don't get to go to. Why don't you get to go to it? Because you don't even know about it. You're not even told about it. In this hearing, they make they uh, evidence is presented and it's one-sided evidence. It's hearsay evidence because quite frankly, once again, you're not there to defend yourself. And then they find that you are a danger to yourself or others and issued with this gun violence restraining order causing you to lose your right to keep and bear arms is a gun seizure warrant. This gun seizure warrant is given to the authorities and they are told this individual is a danger to themselves or others and should not own firearms. We need you to go and disarm him. Now, we all know that when they come to disarm you, they are not coming with the welcome wagon. They're not bringing candy and flowers. They're coming armed to the teeth. A SWAT team is going to be coming, and they are going to come to take your guns. And guess what? All of this you don't even know about. Now, that was my entire quote. I said it a little bit more succinctly from that, than that, but you guys get the fact that I'm a little bit riled up about... Miss Susie and her, uh, you know, her lackadaisical attitude towards the story. Because the real infringement here is the fact that you have been, oh, by the way, but when you do eventually get to go to court, yeah, now you have to prove that you are not a danger to yourself or others. You are now guilty until proven innocent, which violates your due process rights, violates your private property rights, because guess what? Well, they're taking your property. 
unreasonable search and seizure. You didn't even get a chance to defend yourself. You committed no crime. Yet they are now, they now have a warrant to search your home, to search your place of business, your, your place of business, to search any place they think you might have a gun. Oh, and did I forget to mention that it violates your, your right to keep and bear arms? Now, once again, and I said people who you may or may not know. Because, see, the bill that Ting plans to introduce, if you listen to him, says it's going to expand it to anybody. Anybody, your neighbor, who doesn't like the fact that maybe you had a Donald Trump sign out in front of your house. It's going to expand it to the guy down the street who may not like the fact that you're a member of the Pink Pistols. All of these folks, anybody can now go to the courts and say, well, hey, you know, this guy's a danger to himself or others. Now, and I want you to ask yourself this. Before you say, well, gosh, the, the judicial system, judges, they're going to take this stuff seriously. You know what? You guys have seen the rulings that have been coming out of these courts. Do you really, do you really have faith that there are not judges out there who are simply so anti-gun, so anti-Second Amendment, so wanting to make sure that they are not going to be on the wrong side of one of these? That they were the guy who let the, the mass shooter out there? Are you sure that they're not just going to issue it and say, well, hey, he'll get to come to me in 21 days and plead his case? Really? You have that level of faith? Really? I, I don't. And you guys know me. I'm, I'm Mr. Law and Order. <laughs> I believe I well, I used to believe in the judicial system. I believe I believe in law enforcement, but I used to believe in the judicial system. But the more I deal with judges, the more I come to find out, yeah, they're uh I don't know. I, I believe in a healthy skepticism of government. I believe the founding fathers, when you look at the how what they wrote about it and you look at how they designed our government, they believed in a in a skeptical uh they had a, they believed in a healthy skepticism or, or uh, lack, tr trust, lack of trust when it comes to government. But I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, when it comes to my constitutional rights and the right to keep and bear arms, here in the state of California, here on the West Coast, being a part of the Ninth Circuit, I have absolutely no faith, no faith in our judicial system. Mm -mm, no, no siree, Bob. So all of these were all things that were actually talked about. Now, here's the, oh, here's the other funny part about it. So Miss, uh, Miss uh, uh, Susie, uh, she decided she wanted to say, well, you know, if we're going to have a conversation about, about good, well, you know, what, what are the things that you, I mean, what are your solutions? And I said, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I didn't, it's not my job. I mean, it's not my job to come up with public safety solutions. My job is to defend the rights uh, of, of Americans, to defend our civil rights. In this case, our right to due process. In this case, our right to private property. Our right against illegal search and seizure. Our right to, to keep and bear arms. Our right to free speech. These are, these, are the things that, these are the things that are my job. But I said, here's the thing. If you really want to talk about solutions, well, then everything needs to be on the table. Compromise cannot be, well, tell you what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take your rights. Now, let's negotiate about how much we're going to take. That is what Phil Ting wants. That's what Kevin DeLeon wants. That's what Nancy Skinner wants. They just want to negotiate how much of your rights are you going to lose? Because, well, guns. We're not going to talk about how we actually create a safer society. Like making it easier for a person to be able to exercise their right to bear arms. Making it so that as long as you are a law-abiding citizen who can demonstrate that they un know and understand the law... Uh, that you you are a law-abiding citizen and you can effectively use your firearm, that you ought to be granted a right to bear arms. Whether it's open carry or concealed carry, you ought to be able, your right to defend yourself does not end at your front door. How about making it so that we aren't making our children victims by putting them in target-rich environments, calling them gun-free school zones, requiring them to stay there, and then allowing anybody to be able to walk on campus with a firearm? Well, everybody except a law-abiding citizen that might want to defend these kids, of course. Yeah, Miss Susie, I I'm sorry. You know, I, I really do think that the next time you decide you want to do a story on gun rights or, or on firearms, my suggestion is 
uh, you ask somebody who knows what they're talking about to do the story. Because clearly you were not up to the task in this case. I welcome you. You said you wanted, if you want to have a conversation, if you really want to talk, then we can talk. But if you want to do another hat job like this, I mean, a job that literally you seem so interested, you just wanted to do a story about guns, that you said absolutely nothing in this piece. Absolutely nothing, except that you have no idea what you are talking about. Thus further diminishing any trust that any of us have in the mainstream media. Yeah, that that if you want to know why 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 a lot of other gun groups won't talk to you, this is why. Because you demonstrate ignorance and you do it over and over and over again. And I know what'll happen. You're just some, you know, some probably minimum wage almost reporter, and you'll probably be shipped off to another station to try and get a better job uh, sometime in the next six months or so. Uh, and then the next person will come in straight out of college and they will do the same exact hack job. But once again, folks, KPIX, the rest of you in the mainstream media, this is why we don't trust you. This is why, but I will say this, this is also the reason why I make it a point to go on your shows, to talk to you, to give you an opportunity to be educated. In this particular case, Susie, I don't know if it was because you were in a rush or because you really didn't care or because you already had a perspective that you wanted to, to project. But yeah, you didn't demonstrate that you had any idea what you were talking about here. And uh, you, you made yourself look kind of stupid. Anyway, if y'all agree, please make sure to chime in in the comments. Let Miss Susie know that, that you agree. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember, this is the home in the fight for civil rights, okay? Got, got, folks, we need to subscribe to our channel, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page. Uh, folks like Susie are the ones, they're trying to get the word out. They have bigger audiences than we do right now. But guess what? If your friends and their friends and their friends subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, re watch these videos, guess what? We will be able to get the word out. We, won't, we don't really need the mainstream media if we are on our job. Anyway, you guys, uh, take care. Have fun. Stay free. This is Craig Deleuze. Tune in out. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.